my name is Inhit Park, a third year medical student at UWSMPH. Today, I will be covering the ocular manifestations of age-related macular degeneration and how it causes chronic vision loss. In brief, age-related macular degeneration, or AMD, is a disease that leads to irreversible vision loss that is caused by damage of the macula. The formation of soft drusen from back above retinal secretions are thought to contribute. Currently, there is no cure for this disease, and management involves modifying risk factors to slow disease progression. We will discuss these points in more detail later in the presentation. AMD is the leading cause of irreversible central vision loss among people aged 50 and older. It is more prevalent in Caucasians than in African, Hispanic, or Asian populations. And there are two types, dry and wet. Dry AMD is the most common type, affecting 90% of people who develop this condition and causes gradual vision loss. Wet AMD, on the other hand, is less common and progresses more quickly to cause severe vision loss or blindness. It is possible to start with dry macular degeneration and develop the wet type. Since the focus of this presentation is chronic vision loss, we will focus on dry AMD. In order to better understand the pathophysiology of this disease, let's review some anatomy of the eye. There are three tunics, or layers of the eye. Going from out to in, there is the sclera, the choroid, and the retina. The retina is a sensory membrane lining the inner surface of the back of the eye and is responsible for converting light into chemical and nervous signals that are then sent to the brain via the optic nerve. The retina itself is composed of multiple layers. Immediately adjacent to the choroid layer is a retinal pigment epithelium, or RPE. Then we have the two types of photoreceptors, the rods and cones. Rods detect motion, provide black and white vision, and function well in low light. Cones provide central vision, color vision, and perform best in brighter settings. Next, there are horizontal cells, bipolar cells, and amacrine cells, and then the ganglion cells. The nerve fibers of the ganglion cells all come together at the optic nerve. The macula, which is the area that is affected in AMD, is a central part of the retina. The macula is responsible for central vision as well as fine vision. As a result, damage to the macula, as occurs in AMD, causes dark spots in the center of the visual field and decreases your ability to make out fine details. There are multiple risk factors that have been identified for AMD. The strongest ones include age, family history, and cigarette use. Let's go over the pathophysiology of AMD to understand how it causes vision loss. The current study suggests that a combination of oxidative stress and inflammation play key roles in the pathogenesis of AMD. The precise roles of these two processes are not fully fleshed out yet. A recent study has proposed that the mechanism by which the macula is damaged involves the backup of the secretions made by the retinal pigment epithelium. Normally, these secretions flow across Bruch's membrane, which is a thin extracellular matrix that separates the retina from the choroid. When these secretions cannot cross, they clump together to form what are called soft drusen. These abnormal accumulations end up disrupting the RPE and eventually leads to atrophy of that layer and the adjacent photoreceptors. When this occurs in the macula, which again is responsible for central and fine vision, individuals experience decreased visual acuity. What are drusen anyway? Drusen contain lipoprotein-derived debris and lipid pools and are deposits that form under the retina. There are two types, soft and hard. Small, hard drusen form as part of the normal changes that occur with aging. Having hard drusen does not always indicate eye disease, and this type may never end up causing any vision problems. Soft drusen are larger, tend to cluster, and have indistinct edges. As mentioned in the proposed mechanism of AMD pathogenesis, having soft drusen is a sign of AMD. Here's the schematic to help you better understand what happens to the retina in AMD. The yellow areas represent drusen which form from RPE secretions. When those secretions do not flow across Bruch's membrane and instead accumulate under the retina, the RPE experiences structural distortion. Ultimately, the RPE and photoreceptors experience ischemia and atrophy, resulting in vision loss. Drusen are also used to help classify AMD. Early AMD is defined as when there are many small or medium-sized drusen and no pigmentary abnormalities on fundoscopic exam. In intermediate AMD, the drusen are medium-sized and there may be pigmentary abnormalities or there may be a larger drusen. Late AMD is when there is significant atrophy of the macula and are signs of wet AMD. So far, we've discussed the macular changes that aging individuals and those with AMD may experience. 
How does this translate into clinical picture? People with early AMD will usually be asymptomatic. Vision will be normal or near normal with minimal metamorphosia or visual distortion. Visual acuity may still be unaffected or minimally affected in intermediate AMD. As the disease continues to progress, patients may complain of gradual unilateral or bilateral central vision loss that manifests as difficulty reading, needing brighter lighting for tasks that require fine visual acuity, and having central scotomas or blind spots. There is no cure for AMD, and management is focused on decreasing the rate at which individuals progress from one stage to the next. As shown in this table, in early and intermediate stages, treatment focuses on modifying risk factors with the addition of using antioxidant and mineral supplements for the intermediate stage. In late stage AMD, treatment depends on if the disease is wet or dry. In advanced dry AMD, characterized by geographic atrophy, there is no specific treatment other than AREDS2 vitamins and referral to low vision resources. If the patient has neovascular AMD, First line treatment is serial intravitreal injection of antivascular endothelial growth factors, such as bevacizumab, ranibizumab, or iflibercept. Thermal laser photocoagulation is another option, but it is much less commonly employed. Lastly, let's briefly discuss prognosis. In the table, the numbers in the second row represent the percentage risk of developing late stage AMD within five years. Patients with early AMD have a very low risk, but this jumps up to nearly 20%, or 1 in 5 patients, for those categorized as having intermediate AMD. The percentage for late AMD is the percentage risk of the other eye progressing to late AMD if it hasn't already done so. In summary, AMD is a disease that may lead to irreversible loss of one's central vision that occurs in individuals aged 50 and older. It occurs more frequently in those with certain risk factors, including smoking and family history of AMD. Oxidative stress, inflammation, and formation of soft drusen are thought to play key roles in the pathogenesis. Although there is no cure, AMD is managed with risk factor modification and antioxidant and mineral supplementation. And if it progresses to neovascular AMD, anti-VEGF injection or laser photocoagulation techniques are employed.